This is the Unihertz tank. What makes this phone unique isn't the ruggedness, and it isn't the 22,000 mAh battery. It's what you see right over here. A 1200 lumens outdoor light. It's pretty much like having a recessed light like this on your phone. Here's a comparison between the Motorola Edge 30 Ultra's flashlight versus the Unihertz tank outdoor camping light. The phone itself is a really heavy phone. However, it's extremely rugged and strong and has a massive 22,000 mAh battery. So let's take it apart and look at it on the inside. First, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Here's a look at that. There are four T5 screws on either side of the phone which need to be removed. As well as 14 T5 screws on the back. There's a red rubber gasket between the back plate and the frame of the phone, and this helps to keep out dust, debris, or water. The rubber and plastic back housing or back plate is extremely strong. The glass camera lens cover can be replaced by applying heat and prying it off, so it doesn't require this assembly. There is also a plastic transparent cover over the 1200 lumens outdoor light. The NFC antenna is located here, and there's the flex cable for it. The bottom loudspeaker is located here, and there's a thermal pad on it and the flex cable for it is located here. There's also a plastic antenna assembly on the bottom rim. Now there are 12 Phillips screws which need to be removed. This 1200 lumens light now needs to be peeled off. Once it's peeled off, there are two more Phillips screws which need to be removed. This plastic piece can be lifted up and removed. And then the 2 megapixel macro camera needs to be peeled off. Now the top plastic cover can be removed. There are some antenna lines drawn on this plastic cover which are the light gray color lines. There's a flex cable over here for the dual LED flash. As well as one over here for the infrared lights. Here's a look at the other side. We can begin to disconnect the flex cables on the main board. Here's a better look at the 1200 lumens light. Looking even closer, we can see a bunch of tiny LED lights. There's a black coaxial cable which also needs to be disconnected by popping it off. Now there are three Phillips screws which are holding down the main board that need to be removed. On the main board there's a 20 megapixel night vision camera, a 108 megapixel primary camera, as well as a 2 megapixel macro lens. None of the cameras have OIS or optical image stabilization. The camera connectors can be disconnected by just popping them off. There's also copper tape on the front shields to help transfer heat. There's more copper tape over the shield on the back, as well as a thermal pad over the processor and RAM and these chips over here. Here's a better look at the RAM and processor. This flex cable needs to be peeled off from this plastic cover. And then there are six Phillips screws which need to be removed. The other ends of these two flex cables connecting the sub board to the main board need to be disconnected. And then there are 11 more Phillips screws which need to be removed. Now the mid-frame can be lifted up and removed.
On this side, there's a graphite pad to help transfer heat. And once this is peeled off, it reveals one of three battery cells. All three battery cells together add up to 22,000 milliamp hours. The other two battery cells are located on the back of this aluminum midframe. Once the midframe and battery assembly are removed, we can see the opening in the frame where the screen cable runs through. So if you needed to replace the screen at this point, you'd heat up the front of the phone where the screen is and pry off the old screen, apply new adhesive, reapply the new screen, making sure you run the cable back through the opening in the frame and reassemble your phone. There are five Phillips screws holding down the subboard. The flex cable for the headphone jack can be disconnected. And then it can be lifted up and removed. Here's a better look at that. There's a rubber gasket around the charger port. Here's a look at the other side. Here's a better look at the 32 megapixel front facing camera. The proximity sensor flex cable needs to be disconnected from the SIM reader board. And the single Phillips screw needs to be removed. Here is a better look at that. The earpiece speaker is located on top and is held in place with a cure in place gasket. The infrared or IR blaster is located here and the vibrator motor is located next to that and that's also held down with some adhesive. The primary microphone is located on the bottom corner and that's also held in place with a cure in place gasket. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 4 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.